Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, the classroom. We're on, what is this, 10, I think? I'm pretty sure we're on video number 10. Forgot to count them. Uh, anyway, we're going to do, um, I, I had uh, this one picked out, I mentioned it last time, the uh, American Tree Sparrow, and I had a request for doing the Tree Sparrow. I love the, the Tree Sparrow. We have a lot of them out at our place out in Pennsylvania, which I'll be heading back to next week, so I'll be excited to go back and see some of the, the birds as they start coming into the fall uh, time. But uh, this one, I brought this one down out of the gallery. This is one that um, I did. Uh, this is a, a, fl uh, a flycatcher, and uh, I did her. She nested over my, uh, over my painting window for a couple of years. She came back for a couple of years. She'd have two... Uh, Two broods a, a year. She was just really a lot of fun. And I painted her up one time in our in some of our uh, apple blossoms from our apple trees, and uh, uh, and and really enjoyed that. You know, with the blossoms and the flycatcher, like that. So I did this one, and it's a um, one that hangs up in our gallery, and uh, I thought you'd like to see that. I'm gonna do. Kind of the same thing. I have some pictures of some cherry blossoms here. I'm going to uh, do the the tree sparrow. This is going to be the tree sparrow I picked up. This was a, a free photo out of the uh, Google Images, and um, I think it's from Wikipedia, as a matter of fact. And uh, so I sketched that up here, and I'm going to put some of these uh, cherry blossoms here. I think with uh, with her right here. I think that might be a bit of fun. So let's go through and kind of make a plan. Now, before I get a little bit further into this, please like and share our videos. If you could take that moment, I would really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. We do a lot of free videos. We've been doing it to help everyone through this COVID thing. And, um, and I think we're going to continue on with that because we're getting some nice reaction. We love to grow the channel a little bit more. Um, and see if I get up to and over 100,000 uh, subscribers, which were not quite to 90,000, but uh, we've grown quite a bit this year. But if I can get that, we get more things from YouTube for our channel. So we would like to be able to offer some of those things. And so that's why we're pushing so hard. So if you help us out, share, get your friends, everything, subscribe to us. We'd really appreciate it, okay? All right. So let's make a plan. So when we look at her, we've decided, okay, you're going to paint her portrait. You're going to paint her details. I love the detailing and the coloring in and around um, the face here and, you know, the two-tone beak. And, you know, you, you look close. You can see some of those yellows and stuff come right back in through there, travel through here. Um, and I think that would be, uh, uh, you know, magnificent to do a little bit more detailing in here. So I'll be bringing out the uh, number four round, my detailing brush. I would like to uh, do a little bit more painterly. Now, see, like with this bird that I did here when I did the portrait, so I did a lot of detail around her face here and did her a little bit more painterly back down through here. So smaller little marks into there, more painterly. So this is the more painterly look where you get this nice modeling of the color and the more details you see the more of the more of the stroke so i would you know i'd probably like to uh, see if i can do something a little similar not exactly but a little similar to that with with her and then we'll use these cherry blossoms i think and uh, i have two uh, really magnificent cherry trees that are are on either side of our driveway at our place out in Pennsylvania and they just in the spring, in the uh, early spring, they just coat all the cars with pink blossoms everywhere. It is they get everywhere. They're beautiful when they're on the tree, but when they start falling down, whew. all right. So I sketched it up. I have some blossoms here, some ideas. I'm going to put her a little bit more on a branch this time. We might have to end up having to do some legs here, and uh, uh, we'll pick out some colors. Now this is just this is an 11 by 11 board. This is my MDF board. I paint on so you can see that and I just gave it a coat of uh, a light gray color here and uh, it's black and white and a little bit of yellow and then we'll uh, we'll look at doing some of that you know I really like this bit of a brighter blue back behind these blossoms it's it's more cheery of a color and um, I think I'm going to try to do something like that so 
let's take our three quarter inch brush I'm going to put a little bit of extender out here not that I'm going to blend I just like how it goes and uh, maybe uh, towards the violet a bit so this is my thalo blue so my colors out here same as I have on all the others Hansi yellow, Darulite yellow, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphtha red light, pine green, thalo blue this is red violet, cornacridone violet and white and I'll take this a little bit more to the violet side here and let's leave it not quite as light as we have been doing we'll leave it more down here towards a seven to a six let's see what that's going to look like as it be a, a bit more of a, of a brighter blue when you do that and that's because white is a toner so you know, and you don't always think about that. You think white, you know, lighten up your colors and everything, but white is also a toner. So, um, you know, it can really, uh, as you get it, you'll lose your intensity of your colors if you want to leave some of that nice brightness in there. So I'll come right around this guy here real quick, and I'm going to leave this a little bit more painterly like this out on the edges. Those sell really well for me. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I get a lot of requests, and, and I'm very grateful for all the requests and stuff. And I try, we try very, very hard to schedule these things, and we have to schedule for our filming and stuff weeks and sometimes months up in advance because we have online classes running. So, you know, it's like the glass that I've been promising you guys. That's coming. We have that scheduled. Um, it just ta it takes time, but you know a lot of people say I want to see this, I want to see that, I want to see that. Well, see, we make absolutely nothing on these videos to do these things for you guys. So we're a production studio. We have four salaries that we have to pay also out of our studio here. So I have to worry about selling something, and you know if I do something that is, you know you you may really like, but if it's not within my customer base, nothing against what your likes or dislikes are, but if it's not within my customer base, I'd have a hard time selling it, and then I have a hard time paying for it if that makes sense, okay so uh you know I just have to um figure a way <laughs> you know we just have to figure a way because we're uh you know we're a, a full production gallery here we sell what we paint that's how we make our living and uh, paints brushes and and uh, selling our paintings and stuff so anyway see isn't that just kind of a nice little blue sometimes you can you know race back in here with some of those grays and soften these out you know if you really want to get into that real modeled uh, background those ghosts I have a lot of people that say they really like the ghosty type of backgrounds and stuff like that that we put in here we could put a softer yellow lighter gray right back out through some of this let's put some extender in that and uh, push some of that around see and then you'll get that lost dreamy kind of effect of the colors here through I like those you know that marbleizing kind of effect through the uh, through the background so if you want to do some of that I really like using my hands so I'm very thankful this is non-toxic and paints and stuff so we make sure of that so that's not too bad there kind of wiped out my uh, blossoms there a bit bringing them back just a touch here there we go I end up sketching them again but we can do that too all right so you got this kind of dreamy little background there for it a little brighter blue back behind him there um and i think that will work let's go in and let's set a few colors I think I'll do that. I think I'll take my uh, number eight here and uh, set a few colors for those blossoms. Now the blossoms, when we look at these blossoms, they're really kind of a light pink, which I think is kind of pretty. And you can make a warm pink from naphtha red light. This makes a real warm, warm pink here. Let's even toss some of that little blue in there just a bit. That's a real warm pink. Uh, the blossoms that you have here, sit, you can see some warmer colors. See, that's some of the color that you see right back through there. But there's also this cooler color. Now, cooler colors, cooler pinks are going to come from your quinacridone. So this is a warm pink and this is a cool pink here. And if you don't know, you put the two together. But you want to, you know, when you're painting little uh, 
blossoms like this. Now, what I want, what I really like, and this is what I, this is soft focus back here. You know, it's the blurry lens depth that you get through there. And uh, so I like, I do like to add that, you know, into the background sometimes back through here. And uh, just, and I may not do anything with this later on. I may just leave it soft focus like that and paint just the main focus of the painting up here. We may add a little bit of light and then that's it. But I do like soft focus type stuff. And so do my, so does my uh, collectors, my people I sell to. They love that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to whisper some of those, some cool, some warms. So you can see the difference between the warm and the cool there. Some cool and some warm through the through the background, treating it more like it's a soft focus background back here. Other trees, other things going on. And then after we get the soft focus down, what we'll do is we'll bring it in more into focus, you know, more into the front where we're going to have, you know, some blossoms and stuff here. And I don't want to get too wild, but maybe a few. And what I do see is my paint's real thick here. And so what I do is, when I use my paint and I load my brush like this, I then plan, my next thing is to plan where my major stroke is. So, like if you're looking at a photo or something like that, or if you're looking at like this flower here, your first stroke would be that. That would be your lightest textured stroke. And then you let the paint run out and go as it goes back around like that. So if I was going to paint something like that up there, I would go like that and come around and then the paint runs out of my brush and it allows me to paint the back of the the flower like that. So brush wise, that allows me by planting my first stroke that gets a lot of textures and paints with it, that's where you can get a lot of depth to um, some of your flowers and stuff that we're gonna, you know, that you paint and how, that's how I go by, so how I go about it. So I just don't attack a flower. I plan for, you know, when I load my brush, how I load my brush, lots of paint, you know, here into this, into this petal that's going to go right up in here. There's going to be a lot of paint and then maybe a little pink and stuff back here, a little softer, but I'm planning on where that, where that flower, where that petal is going to go and which one. And I generally start with the ones that have a lot of texture in them and before I, and then let the colors and stuff run out. Let's take a softer bit of this light right back through here and just push a bit of that right back here. Okay, and uh, we'll just leave some of this here. Let's put a few more, little maybe more towards the pink. We'll come back and revisit these flowers. These are just setting them in here to to get some ideas. Before I leave here, maybe I'll take a bit of my red and red violet here together and come in and set a softer little pink right on the corner of your brush. You know the fusion brushes are really soft. This is the secret for a lot of things that I do. We design these brushes. We originally designed these brushes for watercolor but then when um, I started to do a lot of soft focus techniques and decided, man, these work wonderful for these. And so I'll touch real heavy and then I use the other side of the brush just to kind of soften the effect of the flower here a bit. You can push off a bit into that. You can push the color into the background here. Here we go. And uh, gives me a good idea about the starting of these flowers. Now, you know, cherry blossoms and stuff, they have a little more red, red violet, sometimes a little burnt sienna, right at the, uh, you know, if you're, you're turning them right at the base of the calyx or the stem side of the flowers and stuff. So you're, you know, that's why you would tap in some smaller, just marks of these colors as well, how they would come in and you can actually do a few uh, smaller little blossoms with them as well. But uh, I'm just going to put out a few little marks of those colors out here. This is just to give me uh, working this while some of my blue is a little bit wet and uh, allows me to soften it out. And then I'll change them up 
as we get in and put greens and other things in. But sometimes when I have a nice wet background, I, I do like to work through it a bit. Here's a little softer pink here. So I'm going to build some of these a bit more. But I just want to make a couple of pretty ones here. And uh, I have to decide, you know, how much, you know, I don't decide the blossoms, you know, how much I'm going to do on the blossoms until I paint the bird. Because the blossoms, as much as I enjoy painting them, they are not the center of interest of this painting here. So I'll just work this around a bit. Streak a few of these colors. Streaking of the colors and blur a few of these colors out here. Just push and blur. Because once you get these done here, the rest of it is just going to, you know, say it's, hey, it's a nice, um, they'll look like, let me just put that, way. they'll look like flowers to the viewer here. Let's put a soft gray back here as this one's turned like that. And now we'll go over, that's good, now we'll go over and work on the bird a bit. I think we'll, I'll put those that reference photo away from a bit and let's grab our bird here. Let's grab the bird and I'll set this up. I've got to be careful where I set that bird because it's wet blossoms now. Okay. So I think I'm going to approach this. Uh, these are yellows. There's nothing here that's really glowy. Matter of fact, you know, there's only a little bit of bright yellow here to Hansa. So most of this area I can paint with a yellow oxide, which means I can use an opaquing color here. So that determines that. Now, you know, before we painted, you know, cardinal and stuff, which I showed you, I started with lighter tones and worked to the darker tones because of the nature of the col colors of the cardinals. And, you know, what pigments do I have, you know, to be able to opaque out? So if I was going to paint a lot of Darulite yellow, I would be doing that first because it is not an opaquing pigment. But yellow oxide is an opaquing pigment and very, very thick. And so I can paint most of this whole area in here. Yellow oxide, maybe a touch of, of the Darulite and Hansa, but that yellow oxide will opaque it out. That being said, so what am I saying we're going to do? I'm going to start with the darks because I can opaque out the darks with my yellows later on. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take, I'm going to use my little number four uh, fusion. I just put a little extender in here. Just if I use extender. Here I used it to softly blur some of the colors. And uh, here I'm going to use it just so it slides over the surface a bit. I like that sliding color of it. I'm going to come in here and just put in some marks, a few more than what I actually see, because I'll paint them out. Darker colors, sometimes add a little more blue here, just to kind of get a feeling of the speckled nature of the bird here, of the colors, the darks and lights of the feathers here. Some dark feathers coming down here, the primaries coming down, overlapping each other onto the tail. Nice tail. And I like to push a bit so I get some streaks through that. And then I'll blur some of that off here. Just so that it, uh, I, you know, that I don't like the tail to take up too much interest to the, to the, uh, to the bird here. So, here we go. One of the requests I had was to do the kookaburra that, from Australia, which I think I'm going to do because I love that bird. And I loved all the time I spent in Australia and and uh, feeding those kookaburras. So I might, I'm going to probably do one of those. I'm going to do the uh, European robin. I want to do that one as well. And uh, love the colors of that European robin. So here I'm going to put a bit of that. Let's put a touch of this color. Just kind of wispy it in and around the face area here. I'm going to take a larger version of this very carefully with the chisel here. Push that into the top of the beak. Maybe just the point of the bottom. Now you could use your little round for this as well. Put a bit of color into that one there. Let's use this up on the primaries here. There's some light and dark lines. Just put in a few of those and a few little marks. Now some of these marks will come back with 
dark colors and stuff later so but when I put these colors in and since I'm going to be using a lot of opaquing pigments you know I like to just touch and model so you see some burnt sienna but I I generally put in more color than what I actually see into the bird so because uh, I always paint out that's what I always tell you guys I always do more and I paint out I always find that a crossing of the colors when I put on too much and then I go back the other way I am controlling the edges of the color a lot better that way and uh, that gives me a softer look a lot of times now I'm just going to take a little more burnt sienna in it a little thin here and just push a little bit of that down into the shadow the body shadow that's going to sit underneath here so you see these dark marks and you see a little bit of that body shadow up underneath there and I like that just bits of that around I like this kind of stuff this painterly look to the bird that's what gives it life so what you what I try to do and I don't always get it but what I try to do is have different kinds of marks big marks small marks um, you know not I don't say strokes because in the a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, you know, the, uh, I would say the French Impressionists, they would always consider them marks and staying away from the word strokes because that was a different thing. Um, and so, and then I do believe in that. Now, I'm going to take some burnt sienna. I see up on the top up there, burnt sienna, red, and a little yellow here will make a, a little darty light yellow. A little burnt sienna and uh, a touch of your naplo red light will make this nice bright kind of orangey color here and it goes just past the crown here and then taps down just a bit another band of it coming right from his eye here down and I like to drag that brush so I get those the, it's not just a stroke. See, I, I always turn the edges and drag it with just a little bit of paint so that, you know, it, it gets different looks to it. That's what I try to do with all my brush work that I do. I try to give, I touch different corners, do different things so I make different sizes of marks. Follow the, follow the calligraphy of the head and stuff here. That's always a good thing. Follow that calligraphy around, okay? And uh, get some of that in. Let's get a bit of that touch or two of that burnt sienna in and around there. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to use uh, start out. I'm going to take some of the blue right into some of this burnt sienna. This is going to make a beautiful gray. Uh, let's lean that just a touch more blue, 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 violet here. And uh, so you can see up underneath here. See. That blue, blue, violet, gray up underneath, and let's just touch a bit of that color through. Some of that is just like the background, so it's pretty good already. We'll touch a bit of that. That's pretty good. Usually I will carry the color, even if I don't see it down through here on the bird, which I don't. I'll put it a little bit there just to carry that tone down through. And... Um, I find that that works really, really well. Okay, I'm going to set that brush to the side because we decided we're going to do some detailing and stuff. I'm going to start with a larger, lighter color here, yellows, right up in on this part of the beak. If I can get some of that in there. If I start dirtying up my brush, a little bit of the browner color in there. And... We'll get some of that nice bright, maybe just a touch of light into that here, just a bit. I start putting colors where I see them, and I'm going to lighten up my gray here. And let me just clean this area off so we can see this really well here. I'm going to lighten up my gray, work through my values of gray, but now I don't. Now see how that's kind of modeled. That's what I call modeling. I don't want to overmix it too much. I want these colors to kind of come off. Since I'm not real sure what the value is, well, I know what the value is, but uh, I always start where I see the lightest, and there is a light, some of the lightest mark is up here by where the light is coming onto the bird, right up in there, a nice, light, warm, kind of almost yellowish 
tone right in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and push that in right there. Don't get too close to that eye. Push that in right in there. Let's tap some of that following the good calligraphy of his face, pulling down this way. Some of that pulling down here. Pull down. I like to do the details with this little four. It works so well because you can be still be kind of painterly with it if you flatten it out a bit. Let's get this a little bit lighter gray. Push some of that around. A little bit more gray into that. Change the tone up a bit. Constantly work through, change the tone so that you don't paint too long with the same color. That's what gives the uh, more interest to your birds. So only take a few strokes before you go change that color a bit. Let's work that. Let's put a bit of that yellow in there too. That's a good, nice, warm color to have. Here towards the front of him. There. And small little marks of that. A little bit of yellow. Let's go back to a bit of the gray. So I'll work these colors back and forth. Light and dark. Quick. Little marks here. And I... And right around into this area is where I have to start to decide, you know, do I want to go, do I want to leave this detail or do I want to go back painterly and, uh, you know, use a larger brush and make more of a stroke. I haven't decided quite yet, so I'll just keep going with what I know. Let's get up around his eye here. Let's get back towards the grays. Push some of those in here. So sometimes you see, you know, you've got this night, we put that dark in and see that light. And since I'm using opaquing colors, I can take that dark out really well and leave that, that uh, lighter stroke there coming through. And uh, that works pretty well. I don't know if you can hear that train. I love the trains here in Sydney. They have going east and west and north and south all directions so I'll just lightly put in a little bit more I gotta go start putting it in this eye here pretty quickly here but I do like uh, little touches you know down through here the little tiny feathers the little point of the brush you can uh, develop that eye ring a, a bit there even before I start that dark, I'll develop that up there. Let's go with uh, burnt sienna and blue. Burnt sienna first, right in there. Put a bit of that, then I'll tap a bit of the blue. And burnt sienna, more of a gray, darker color to the eye there. There is a tiny little catch light. It's not a pure white, it's a tiny little catch light here up towards the front and we'll drop that in careful 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 there and ever so soft it could probably be um, a bit more there and again, if you get too much, just take it out with your dark. Load in and tap out with your dark. I'm going to take a bit of that dark down below here and um, trapped. there's that little fly he likes my bird maybe it likes that and so we got to tap just a bit of that dark in there and there's just you know when I look it all depends on how much time and how much detail I'm going to put into the bird but I'll look at uh, there's just a bit of that up and around the front of his eye that gives a little more character to his to his eye there. I'm going to take a bit of burnt sienna here, loosen it up. My burnt sienna is a little thick, so I'll loosen it up a bit. Just tap a little darker color right in there. Maybe a bit more 
few strokes of burnt sienna right back there onto his it kind of brings him to life. Now, see, when you leave those lower grays, you don't want to get the head too light. So you see all this down here, this lower gray. I'm right down in here, you know, seven, six sevenths. I'm going to use a little bit more white. Um, let's get some of the gray here, right in there. And uh, lighten it up. But just a couple values lighter here and add just a little bit of brush movement like this. Just as you can see, the tip of the brush is just, it's very fractured because there's not much paint in it. And just use that to get some of the nice softer feathering on him or her. They are about the same. And I'll put just a little bit more, just a little bit of feathering here like that. Let's put a touch more white right up here to the front and push just a bit of that in there like that. And um, there is a real light little yellow here right along the, the, the line between the upper and lower beak. And I'm going to push that in. I'm going to take a little Darryl light at a little yellow oxide and uh, drop that here to the back or to the bottom part right there push that in a bit and then uh, I'll take some of this dark here and paint back into that that light just to soften it see that always gives a nice a nice uh, beak line there there's a um, little touch Instead of like a shine, sometimes I'll put a little gray up onto them, but this guy isn't showing it in this photo, so I'm not going to do it. But I'll take a bit of the yellow. It's hard to get it up there because these aren't opaque. So you just leave a little mark up there like that as a little shine, and that's all it really needs. Okay, let's go down. We'll take. I'm going to take some of this yellow right into my grays, lighten it up just a bit. Maybe a bit of the other two yellows in there, so it models it up a bit. And let's come through and pull down just a bit of that yellow. Yellow, yellow with a little burnt sienna in it is very nice as well. Change the color, the tone down here a bit. Here like this. Run some of these. Don't try to, you know, when you're when you're referencing a photo, don't try to copy it too closely. I mean, you try to, you know, you try to get close, but don't, don't get wrapped up in so much. Just try to, what I do is I squint down just a little bit and just kind of uh, squint my eyes down so I can just see the big colors and I kind of just follow them. That's all I do. And uh, I'm going to put in more of an orangey color right here. Pull that back down like that. And See, it's just it's getting that area right in there on him, and a bit more of the orangey kind of color with a little burnt sienna. So it's the yellows and a little burnt sienna. Just kind of drag this over a bit into some of that, so you catch the feeling of him when you do that. See, let's take a bit of that right up in here as well. He has that. Let's put a bit of that right up on the top of his head. It's a little more color. Okay. And I used to do a lot of, you know, when uh, year, when I was more of a super realist, I used to do a lot more blending than I do. Then I realized you really don't need to do a lot of blending. Now, I'm taking some white with this yellow right here, and I'm just going to touch and lift off to create the little feathering like right in here like this and there's some pulling down here on the top part of his mantle here we'll pull some of this down here just lighten just lift off and let it drag that's where that number four really works well so you use your paint a little thicker like this you touch and then drag off see in the hairs of the the tip hairs of the brush, just lift the pressure and let it drag and you get a nice 
Nice little feathering there. Boy, you know, I see some people that sit down and, uh, you know, use like a small liner brush and go after that. And I was just like, boy, you've got to have a lot of patience to do that. I used to think about doing that kind of stuff. Now I do. Now it's just like, oh, I like the painterly look kind of in here. So I'm just slowly lightening up and adding a few more values to that. You can see it gives you kind of a nice, you know, look to it, building it up. So we're basically, basically painting Premier Coup with this, starting with the darks, working our ways to the lights here. Let's put in a nice light right down here at the end of the mantle here, or at the end of the... His first coverts here. Let's put some of this light in like this. Curve that right back up towards his body there. We'll come down in a round just a bit here for the his secondary flight feathers. And here some marks of the lines here. Now this is, you know, you have to, like I've talked to you before, I have to make a decision just how much detailing I'm going to put into this little bird as, you know, because a lot of times I don't put this much detailing and stuff into the feathers this far down away from his face. Um, but he's going to soften off here in just a minute, so. And I just might leave some of this just to show you guys what it looks like. Here, putting some of that light in and I always will come back and restate a dark next to some of that so I get some of that now let's take this yellow oxide and some uh, burnt sienna here we'll model this into the brush like this and let's come right back down through this area and negative paint right up to the white edge there of that these little of these first coverts here. Then I'll take a little more burnt sienna, maybe a touch of blue, find a kind of cleaner area here. Just, uh, I'll add a bit of extender just for moisture here more than anything else. I'm going to take some of that down just with that dark and I can restate any of the dark darks that I want. See how easy those darks paint out anything. They paint everything out really easy. So, there we go, just a mark or two. But he's got, he's got a lot of orange. So orange is burnt sienna, yellow, reds, burnt sienna here. He's got a lot of orange in him. And I wanna make sure that we see that orange. So orange reds here. Of those colors. Nice little bit of it right up here by his shoulder here. And I can always, you know, put it on like this and set back in some of those um, nice uh, yellows and stuff as well. So push that on there and we'll just go right back up here towards some of these lights and just pull some of that right back up over that working back and forth and what I, I like about Premier Coup, a la Prima, you know all of the direct these are what are called direct painting techniques what I love about the direct painting techniques is a lot of times I'll just paint what the bird needs as opposed to following an indirect technique like a Dutch painting where each layer has to be so controlled because of the quality of the pigments and stuff like that and the look of it but so I, I do enjoy the direct techniques, just painting. Going back and forth and working the colors. I want to work a little bit of that red up in there. Right up there. Boom. Put a bit of that in there. And uh, let's go back and add just a touch of those darker tones through there little tips of the dark. It's got lots of little colors going on here. Little 
bits of those running down the feathers here. There, like that. And uh, burnt sienna blue, that's my main dark here. The uh, burnt sienna and thalo blue. And I'll paint right back up. I'll, I'll negative paint up some of these. And see, that kind of sets those light bands, you know, more into his body here as well. Restate any of the darks that might need right back through there. That's getting a pretty good look. He has a lot more light, like right back up in here, just kind of short stroked some lighter little marks. And uh, so I'll put a few of those and... Uh, there's a nice red one, more so red, right in there. There, like that. And you know, and so when you look at that, you say, yeah, you know, you're getting, you're getting close. I don't have the definition here, um, and I could, I could put in a little bit more definition. That's going to be, but you know, when you start painting with more definition or more edges and stuff, that's really going to take away from his face. So. I'm kind of thinking just how much, you know, do you want to do here um, and not take away from his face. There are some, like, nice little light marks there. We might just drop those in. I'm using just white now, and I'm going to bring up some more white. If I put up a lot of white there, I usually go back and revisit right around his face to really wake up his face a bit because that's this is where we want the viewer to come in we don't want him to see his wing as much and this is just a tiny little soft feathers the tips of them in and around there you'll see him let's put a bit more light just a few little marks of it Boom, 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 right out like that. And uh, maybe that lighter little yellow. You know how I like to do these strokes up over his wing? A few of those. There. Right on. That's good. Now I think I'll take this softer gray white with this and we'll pull that lighter band right on down here over his tail a little bit more at that angle pull that down so it softens it into his his tail a bit and sometimes you just let what happens happen here we'll just put a little light right at the tip of his tail there maybe a little light edge here shows the two parts of it now let's uh I think I'll do his body with my uh, number four here, so I keep his main part of his body a little more painterly here. And um, we might overstroke a couple gray strokes here, feathers right here as well. So it's a little bit more painterly. I like those to sit there softly. It makes a nice transition there too. Let's... Uh, Come in with this softer yellow, yellow oxide. Some of my grays, burnt siennas here. Push some of that. Put a little bit of extender into this just to make this color slide. See how it slides better when I have that in there? I'm not blending because everything's dry underneath, so there's nothing to blend it into. But I'm going to pick up a little more light here, model that up lighter. You try to do it with as few strokes as possible here just real quick like that see that does a that's not too bad maybe uh, you know I'm a little bit indecis indecisive today <laughs> we'll just there that's better leave it that's good and I'll let, I'll let that the end of his tail here fun but he, well you can't because he's got He's got white down there, so we got to put that in. So we'll just slop, softly pull that in right there, right into his tail. Push that a bit. Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough for him there. 
and um, little touches of that color. Always like to do that here. It's got a few little marks of it down along this side that I chose not really to put in. And maybe just a little heavier here. There's coverts there. So we'll leave that. I think that's pretty good. Let's put a, a burnt uh, sienna a burnt sienna uh, idea for his legs there. Right there like that. And uh, that's good and you can take a little yellow and stuff and put it down and whisper that around to incorporate that those legs into his body there. That's good. Now let's um, let's go in and uh, we'll bring back out our blossoms here and we'll take some of that burnt sienna. We'll drop it right down in here. Let's take some of that burnt sienna and uh, get more of a the look of a branch here. Up. Now let that just fade away over there. We'll develop a bit more of a black branch. Now, you know, here at like the junctions of the branches, you can build those up a bit more. You know, um, when I'm painting there, I try to do as much as possible with one or two tones because I don't like to get involved in a lot of shadow highlights of the branches. I like to try to do them just as, as simplistic as possible so that they don't compete too much with not only the bird, but with the uh, flowers and stuff that we have coming on here as well. So, but we're going to need to do a few, and this will, by doing some of this like this too, this will give a, if you show more stems, it gives a more airy feeling to your composition as well. Now I want to come up here, so I want to widen that just a bit. Here, give the idea of his stems or his legs there, and uh, now see I like that, and then I'll blur off the edges a bit so that uh, it looks a look it looks better with the technique that I've chosen here. So I, I'll touch it in, and then I'll just blur it off just a bit. You know, push it off here, and uh, a few little smaller little marks. Here, other little stems and stuff going on. Here, let's uh, so see you blur that off, and sometimes I'll push that off into the into like the flowers, and we'll put something else over that as well. But um, sometimes I'll I'll draw you know the stem down like this, pretty heavy, and let the you know be quite heavy down here. It should, you know, according to good nature, get heavier and heavier going down. But So, I'm, you know, it looks like I've got a lot going on, but I'm using burnt sienna, basically model burnt sienna, and pushing it into and shearing, that's what we call shearing it off, and that's what gives you all this modeling, which to me looks, you know, pretty good compared to some of the, uh, the um, you know, using a lot of different tones. So I kind of like to keep it simplistic when I'm painting these out here. And then I'll get more ghost as I go out here like that. More of a ghost feeling to it here. Now let's take some of the uh, green up in here, some yellow oxide here, burnt sienna and some of our green right up here. And uh, we have some of these nice little leaf shapes here and actually a couple of tones so here's a little more burnt sienna boy that's not really good right there Dave looks like he's eating the leaf here that's better and let's pull down so I'm just kind of I I I don't get into a, I, I don't want to copy. I don't get myself into a copy mode here when I'm doing these leaves. I just kind of catch up. So see, I catch up a feeling of the brush movement here. So that's what I want to 
capture by pulling down. But I don't want to make it too, you know, too uh, edgy, too much edges. It'll take away from him. It's so close. So I just blur that edge that's right there. It's a little different. Normally, I blur the edge away from it, so the edge always pulls it to him. But he's right here. He's got a lot of contrast, so I'll blur that other edge. In other words, I, I usually leave the edge of the side closest to the bird. But uh, if your bird has a lot of contrast, and he does, then you don't always have to do that. But that is always kind of a good idea. So... Something to consider of. You're the artist, you know. This is just stuff for you to consider. Here, let's uh, just mark a few here. Carry some of this. And, and, you know, you can really increase some of the contrast in some of this area, a little green, little burnt sienna here, right in there like that. That's and uh, usually the you know you see clumps of blossoms, clumps of leaves and stuff. So you know they don't intermix too much. Just clumps of blossoms, clumps of leaves. So I'll just push out just a bit, especially as I get out further here. I'm going to let that get more lost and more ghost. Some of you are writing some really neat comments about my ghost leaves and flowers and and stuff. So it's kind of fun. We'll push a few out there like that. That's kind of neat. Just a few out. And, you know, you can really get involved into the leaves here. You know, get some more burnt sienna looks into them, some more yellow looks into them. Just always keep in mind where you are. See, I like this kind of blur out there. Always keep in mind where you are in relation to your, um, to your, you know, your bird and to your composition, where your lost and found are. Don't just start getting wild with your leaves. Be planned. Here are a few of these out. Right out through like that. That's good. And yeah, that's. I'm going to uh, this this leg here. I think is just a a bit you know a bit close makes him look a little stilted. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. Doesn't even have to be exactly the same blue. I'm going to back that one out a bit. I'm going to change the position of his leg here. I'm going to raise it up this way. There we go. He's reaching up that way. Blur that off just a bit. There. And, uh, then I will pull some lighter, kind of find a kind of a sort of clean area there, some lighter strokes over that leg there, like that. That's better. He's not quite as tilted. And I think for his position, though, this one, this one needs to come down straighter down like that. Now he's got four legs, so I'll take some dark. Clean that burnt sienna out of my brush for a second. Back that back out. There. That's better. That'll make him look better. Let's put just a touch lighter right here. There. That's better on him. This is to the other side there. That's good. Now, let's go back. And revisit. I think maybe I'm liking this four. I think maybe I'll stick with this four. Let's go right back here with some of our lights. Right on the edges here. And uh, this is all dry. So what I'm doing more than anything else is just making some color marks there. You know, 
so I'm not blending it in there at all or blurring it in there. I'm just making some nice color marks here. Try not to make exactly the same kind of stroke or something. If you know, if you really like that look that we did earlier with the blurring it in, you can always put down a little color and blur it back in there again. That works, you know. I'm just using white, maybe a bit of the yellow in there here. And putting on some more little edges here. You know, the, the blossoms and stuff, see, they undulate their petals a lot, see? They undulate their petals, so you're going to want to do that. That's why I'm using the little four. It's a lot easier. Let's gray this down just a touch here. Just undulate those a bit, some of those grays. That works. Let's take this gray and reconstitute a bit of the pink here. Just an idea here. Just a... See, you can give almost like it's a back turned one back there, see? Should uh, splash a bit of the violet in there. Maybe a little green in it so it's not quite such a bright little violet. That's a good color right there. Got a little bit of the pink and the green in there. It's kind of a pretty little color. Splash that around a bit. Yeah. Maybe a, a mark or two out here, further out. Like there's a blossom starting to develop out there. Nice. I'm going to bring out a bit more sienna here on his legs. That's okay. And sometimes I'll take a, you know, like a good shot of violet or something here. Let's go violet and red here. Push that back in. Especially up and around these. You know, because you get, and if you look at that, see, so you get spots of darker to the violets and little buds and stuff like that. Those are nice to have in, you know, in and around a, a, a composition like this. It's a different shape and color. You know, they're really kind of nice. Let's push a bit of that in. Here, just like they're going to be little blossom sometimes you put a little white right on their edges here like that there pull that through here we go don't get the I don't want to get this too full I want them to leave this one just a bit more open softer here. And a bit more airy, so we're not going to fill it up quite as much. And those make nice paintings as well, but I do like to blur some of it out, you know, and uh, that works pretty well. Let's get a, a bit more uh, just on the corner of our violet, of our two violets. Tap that around the center here. Boy, that's, that's a little dark, so I'm going to go connect with them. Just right around the center. Blur that just a bit. Push into it just a touch. There's just a few, a few right up here in the front. And then let's get a bit of yellow, light yellow and white. Yellow oxide and white. Tap that through to make a little center. Of the little centers there. So see they have a, a bit of the undulation movement in there. We we just and I just want to simulate it just a bit. That's what I do with more than anything else. You know, when I stay real casual is I don't I just emulate it, you know, or I call simulate it just a bit. Not 
I don't go for the realism that I used to paint with. And I like it a lot better. I like those that nice edge to that. Now, that looks he looks pretty good, pretty uh, pretty different here. It could have a bit more of a powerful petal pulling down and away there. Push that out. Got a bit of the nice violets in that. There, that's kind of good. I like that. See, I'm looking at the directions, you know, the pulling and stuff of the petals and the directions of the marks and that I'm putting on. Here. Just a couple of them. That's kind of, that's kind of neat. And um, let's revisit. So I got, I, I like that, and I like that blurry kind of the light that we left back there. But I might want, got some water in my brush there. Let's go um, also back up to a bit larger brush. Let's go back, revisit some phthalo and quinacridone, violet, and some white. You know, I like to do this kind of stuff. Even if I don't like to make exactly the same colors I used before. If it's real, if it's close, that's good enough. Because it adds some difference. Let's just restate that just a bit in there. Get up. And it gives you a better clarity. I'm going to put a bit of extender in this, lighten that up just a touch here. I do like that look. But this allows me to clean up right around his face just a bit more. Here. Get that extra little shot of color around there. Really pulls the viewer right into that area there of him. So I have some blurred out greens there. You can, you know, like I've done before on them, you know, you can drag through a bit. Set some of that that motions of those other petals and stuff a little further back, drag through some of that, and just keep it more about him right up here. Um, and I got a green petal up over his shoulder, so this is kind of some of the stuff that I'd look at and I'll, as I'm finishing him up here. I'm going to take a little white and a little yellow in my number four here. I'm going to bring out the shoulder a bit more. That helps him come forward. There, just like that. Come a little forward. I think I got him a little yellow there. Could be a bit more of the light or a little gray with that. Here. There we go. See, that really puts him in front of that now. And I like that better. Like him in front of that. A little extra. So I like some of the details with this little number four. You can, you know, pull out a few little feathers out, add, add a couple more little things to him here. And uh, it gets a nice look. It gets a nice look to him right there. Now, one last thing that I'm going to do here and I look at this and his yellow and you know I you get a bit of the yellow through here but his yellow is a bit isolated and do you do something about that isolation means that you left a color in one area it violates a rule of color and since I'm teaching color theory online right now I should probably fix it for, you know it's one of the things I look for so what I do is I'm just going to put yellow out as an accent into this painting out here, I'll put it out softly, some, some yellow oxide and some light, and I'll put it on as a little accent out here. And you can see, see, the little accent here pulls him out, pulls that color of him back out here. Just a few strokes of it, like we don't know what they are, what it is. It's just a few little accents of the yellow, could be anything. And uh, I watch it up against him to see that, yeah, his yellow is now, now see that yellow is not isolated anymore. You could turn around and add little yellow blossoms. You could turn around and add, you know, a little yellow mark, a heavier little yellow mark like that. Don't 
donate, you know, paint what you need because that makes a beautiful painting. And even if the cherry blossoms don't have it, just add it a little bit to it. That's okay. That's, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm painting something. Yeah, I'll, I'll reference a photo and stuff, but I'll, I'll add stuff to it depending on what my color management needs. And that all comes from color theory. It tells us what we need. But um, there you go. They got one more, a little bit more onto a branch. Um, you know, do you want to do any more to the branch? You know, you know, you could take, you know, if you wanted to add a little bit more here. See, I like this kind of detail. I don't think it really needs any more. If you do, you could, you know, you could grab some of this dark that's off of, uh, you know, his, and put it into there. Um, and that and that would work. You know, you could do that. I kind of like it like that, so I think I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to sign it, call it done. All right. So uh, if you like it, uh, please hit the like for us, okay, guys? And we really appreciate that. And I'm going to carry on. I know I originally promised 12. I'm probably going to carry on a few more than that, too. Uh, we have a couple other things starting up. You know, I'm going to do a, an entire series of Ola Prima painting, quick Ola Prima painting. I'm waiting for that new medium to get here, which is fantastic. Those of you that really like the feel of oils, this medium will take the acrylics exactly to the feel of oils. It is an amazing medium. Um, so that's coming, that's on its way. You know, everything, everywhere in the world is delayed as far as manufacturing with, you know, the, the COVID crisis. And it should be, because everyone should be safe. Um, but uh, we're still, we're waiting on it. It's on its way to our place, but uh, now they're telling us that it won't be in our place until the end of September. So we're just like, oh, you know, <laughs> so it takes time to get stuff in there. But we're going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. We're, we're going to try to produce two to three videos, you know, for our channels and stuff every week. So uh, make sure that you subscribe. And we'd love to have you see over there. Those of you that are on Facebook, love to have you sign up on the, you know, a lot of people ask me, where can I share? How can I show you my photos? We have a group there called the Academies of Decorative Art. Academies of Decorative Art. Just go over to the group and you can post your photos in there. There's a lot of people in there. There's like 1,200 people there that are sharing photos from everything that they're painting on the challenges and stuff like that in there. And uh, it's it's a great group. And those of you that are in part of my online classes, you can just post it into the classrooms. A lot of people can see it there, okay? All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. And we're going to do that, that kookaburro. I'm going to do one of those because I love that bird. Maybe we'll do that next time. All right, I'll see you guys here.